Hey guys, welcome back to another video, not just any video, welcome back to The Ranking. Uh, last episode where we left off, we broke all the 60s and now we're about to break into the 50s. Um, in case you're new to the channel, I'll give you a little, you know, little synopsis of what I'm doing. I'm ranking every single game I've ever played, or I did rank every single game that I ever played, and, you know, I just have such a passion for video games. I know that's kind of nerdy, or it used to be kind of nerdy, but I think there is beauty in video games. I really do. And yeah, that's nerdy to say, but it is. Uh, that's how I feel. Also, a quick little update. I kind of decided to stop the Black Ops 1 series for now. If any of y'all that are watching this have watched and started my first, I posted the first two episodes of Black Ops 1. I, I took a little break and Black Ops 6 is about to come out. So it's literally coming out, not this week, but next. And so I'm going to start back uploading, you know, playthroughs uh, with Black Ops 6. But without further ado, let's get back into it. All right. Starting at number 59, we have Hidden Agenda. Now, I don't know if anyone has heard of this game. Uh, it's pretty unique. It's a decision-based game. Uh, you know me, I'm a sucker for decision-based games. But the catch with this one is to play the game, you have to download an app, log in. You have to make an account and all that. I hate doing having to make an account to use something. Uh, but a cool caveat to that is I think up to four people can play, like if they download the app, they can play the game at once. Um, so it's four person co-op, which is really nice. Uh, I actually played through this game with a friend of mine at his house, year, like when this thing, when this game released and you know, I, I, I really do enjoy it. Um, or I did enjoy it. So just, just to give you a little plot. Uh, so basically you are playing as this officer, Becky Marnie. And you start off the game and you are investigating a serial killer called the Trapper. And that's exactly what he does. He sets these traps with his victims. And when law enforcement, when law enforcement like tries to intervene or comes to the rescue, most of the time it gets the victim killed. And so it's a very, it's a very interesting plot line. Like it really is like, I really love I really love the underlying story. Um, you know, I think that the game, you feel really connected with the main character, which sometimes falls flat in a lot of games, but it really helps when you're playing as one character. Like with the Dark Pictures games, or even like the Quarry, um, Until Dawn, all those, they have to work really hard to make you like all the characters. Most of the time, you only end up liking one or two a lot. Um which sometimes, depending on the game, that can be the it can be different. But with games that focus on one or two or maybe even three at the max, uh, it's it's very nice. It's it gives you time. Now, speaking of something that doesn't give you time, this game, oh my gosh, it's so short. It's so short. I I want to say I played through this game three times when I stayed at my friend's house for a day and a half. Played it three times. Um. This game can be brutal, man. I mean, because they give there's these sections where I don't know if you know what a QTE is, a quick time event, where it gives you a, a certain amount, a lot of time to hit buttons. Well, this game has QTEs, but it also has a QTE that's a little bit longer, where you have to find clues at crime scenes. And if you miss clues, the game will end sooner. Like it's it's really brutal. It really is. I got one playthrough that was like 35 minutes or 45 minutes. Got one play through that was like two hours, and then I played it again and got to like a three and a half hour playthrough. Um, it may have been three hour playthrough anyway, and I got a pretty, pretty good ending um, the third time, obviously. I didn't realize how brutal it was, even because I don't even remember if there's a difficulty setting, but if so, I was not on a hard difficulty because I like to actually enjoy these games. Um, but oh my gosh, that's, and I, I hate to have a game. Because there's there's some there's a couple of games in my top thirty that are short and as short as this game, and I don't know why, but it works for those games. This game, however, if it gave us more time with Becky and you know the department and even the killer, I think it would be in my top twenty, top thirty. Like it, it really would. That's the only reason this one is so low. I mean, I don't. 
have any complaints about the actual game itself. And I typically, like I was saying, I typically don't like to down on a game for it being short because of the ones that I have. But, um, yeah, I mean, great game. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. I will say, you know, to be devil's advocate to myself, by making the game shorter like this, the replay value is added by a ton. I mean, like I literally just said, I played the game three times in a day and a half. And that wasn't even me binging it. Like, you know, I was just at a friend's hanging out. And so, you know, take what you want with that. But anyway, guys, heading on to number 58, we have the Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me. I know, I know. That's three Dark Pictures games in the bottom 15. Like, I, I know that sounds bad. I know it sounds bad. But I would like to reiterate that I, I'm not saying these games, well, I'm not saying that these games are bad, like I said in the last video. You know, it's just, it depends on playthrough. And I'll be honest, if you want to go watch my playthrough on the channel, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and watch it. Um, I did not get a great playthrough. Uh, I Spoiler alert, I only had two people survive. And you start out with five, I'm pretty sure. I'd have to I'd have to think about the actual numbers, but you may start out with six. I don't even know. I didn't have a good ending, uh, so that made that took away a lot from the story. And you know, some games, some games like Until Dawn, for example, love that game. I'll talk about it later. Uh, <laughs> why did I just do that? Um, we'll talk about it later, way later in the series. Some games like Until Dawn. You can have characters die. You can miss certain Easter eggs. You can miss certain clues that still make the game feel full and whole and still make you love it. And if you love it, you'll want to replay it again. Most people. This game, it punishes you pretty heavily for not keeping people alive. And now, you know, that may be skill issue. Maybe. Maybe skill issue. I don't even know. But it's just... Eh. Anyway, I, I haven't even talked about the plot yet. I'm so sorry. Uh, and basically, a film crew gets recruited to go to this island where someone has r replicated H.H. H. Holmes' house of murder or whatever. You, I can't remember. Murder Factory, I think that's what he called it in real life. But they replicate it only to find out that they have themselves in the trap and they themselves are being hunted. Um, and that's the plot. Good plot. I mean, I thought it was strong. I enjoyed the game when I was playing it. You know, this series, this game in particular, added some new mechanics. Like, they added sprinting. They added vaulting. They added, um, vaulting. Uh, mantling, I guess, would be. Because it takes a while. Uh, they added, like, where you walk over, where you walk over, like, a beam and you have to balance. Um, they added new mechanics, which is cool. Uh, but, you know... I just don't know if I don't know if the best way to go about a story mode game that takes six to seven hours is to punish the player. But that and that may just be me, you know. If some people might want that, they might go for the hard difficulty. When I'm playing this type of game, at least I don't necessarily want that. If that makes sense, uh, that's just me though. That's complete conjecture. That's my opinion. Um, now, I will say the environment to this game was really cool. There were, it was very mysterious and freaky. Like, it was, and also, might I add, the first game in the Dark Picture series that had nothing to do with supernatural stuff. And it's my second favorite in Dark Pictures right now. So, you know, I, I take that, take what you want from that. Um, but, all right, coming in next, the one, the only, well, no. The only FPS game on this list, because every other FPS game I've played is Call of Duty. And like I explained in the first video of this series, I'm going to do a completely other series for Call of Duty. But at number 57, I got to have Battlefield 1. I mean, it is, one, a beautiful game. I mean, for a first-person shooter, it is a beautiful game coming from a franchise that isn't typically known for its, you know, beautiful graphics. This game is, there's some settings that I've seen on this game that are stunning. It really is. 
that's not the only reason this game is on the list, and it's not the only reason it's higher than some of these other games. The heart that this game has, you play through, you play through six different factions of World War II. Like, what? Six different factions, and it is so, like, heartbreaking, some of these individual stories it tells. I think the game is like six hours long. I think I think it is. It may be a little bit longer. I I can't remember. Um, but I, you know, this game would be higher if uh, it. I don't know. It, there were there were memorable scenes for sure. I mean, were we gonna talk about the blimp scene? Like, are you serious? It's insane. Like, I think it, it was the first 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 person shooter to do something that big. Like in a world, which is, you know, and Battlefield 1, or Battlefield, not Battlefield 1, Battlefield is known for its, uh, oh, what's it called, oh, no, what's it called, the thing, uh, it's environmental, environmental, uh, destruction, no, it's not what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about, if you've played environment, uh, if you've played a Battlefield game where you can destroy, like, structures and stuff, uh, Levolution environment, I think is what it's called, I think, Levolution environment, I think. I don't know. Um, but I'm a COD guy, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have much to talk about because each faction, I don't, I don't really dive into each faction just because if I told you each plot line, you know, that would be, I guess it wouldn't be too much. But I, I if you are interested in anything World War II, and I'm a big history fan, play this game, please. Highly recommend but, um, anyway, guys, yeah, that's it for today. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all are enjoying the ranking so far. Um, that was 57. So next, next, we have two more of these three game videos. And then I'm going to be going into one game of video because I'm just going to have so much to talk about the games that I really love. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you, hope you, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I hope y'all guys enjoy this series, and I hope y'all enjoy these videos. Y'all see, I'm getting a little bit of feedback, uh, which is nice, finally. Um, and yeah, guys, see y'all in the next one. Peace.